begin our service today with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the canon. Only God gives the growth. 
He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Lord will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn, The Church is One Foundation. Please be seated.
This time we invite you to open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. That'll be our sermon verse for today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As we mentioned, our, first, our verses, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, and it reads like this. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God gives the growth. A pastor is a borrower. That's what he does. He borrows. He doesn't make anything new. He doesn't, he doesn't create or invent. He borrows. He takes the authority that belongs to the church, that was given to the church by Christ, and he borrows that authority to proclaim the gospel and God's law and to administer the sacraments. He takes bread and wine that he didn't buy and he blesses it and gives it to you. He baptizes using water from the tap that was processed and treated. And then he does the holy act of washing away the sins of a person being brought and adopted into God's kingdom. And then that water goes back down in the drain to be treated once more and to become city water once again. He takes the words from Scripture, not his own words, and he proclaims them to you. His grace is not his grace. It is the grace of Jesus Christ. The gospel is not his gospel. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The pastor is a borrower. That's what he does. That's all he does. He borrows. So much so that actually whenever Paul is talking today about being a planter or a waterer, I almost wish that he would have said instead that those who do the work of ministry are just watering cans. Because after all, what is a farm without a watering can? It's still a farm. God gives the growth. And in fact, today, we feel that perhaps the strain of Christ's words where he says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so often our ears only pick up the negative, right? Our, our ears latch on to Christ saying that the laborers are few. And it is true that, that what we might face today is the same thing that the church has been facing for years. The fact that the laborers are few. That the church will feel the strain from time to time of this truth. And the church will be burdened by it at certain times as well. And that is true today and it has always been. But did you hear the first part? The harvest is plentiful. And that's because in spite of the fact that the laborers are few, God is busy in the field. God is doing the work. The farmer loves the field. And because of that, because he pours out his Holy Spirit on you, the growth continues. The harvest is plentiful. And it will continue to happen. And so all this isn't to say that the role of a pastor isn't necessary or needed or that it isn't an important part of a congregation because it certainly is that as well. After all, drive by a field and you can see what the farmer thinks of it. Are the, are the crops evenly spaced and planted neatly in rows? Are the leaves green when they should be green? Is the wilderness threatening to overtake the field or has it been cut back? Have the walls and the fences been built? If so, then the farmer loves the field. And one of the ways that you can see God's love for you is when he does send a laborer into the harvest, when he gives the church a watering can to provide the seeds of faith, to nourish faith, to, to defend faith from heresies and from false practices and unbelief. This is one of the ways that God demonstrates his love. It is his will that a congregation would have a pastor. After all, what did 
Jesus say to his disciples when he sent them out? He gave them the work of a pastor. He said, go and teach and baptize. And elsewhere, he commissions them to do this in remembrance of me, to, to take this sacrament, the body and blood, the bread and wine, and give it. So we see Christ's love for the church in this way, but it isn't the only way. God continues to provide and bless, and life comes wherever his word is, regardless of whether there is a pastor there formally or not. God will continue to love his people and work in the field. That is good news. It's great news on a day like today. You all have been far more kind to me than I deserve. You have been gracious and, and patient. So much so, in fact, that there is nothing that I can teach you about loving your pastors. There is nothing I can teach you actually about loving one another. And when it comes to encouraging myself and, and other pastors, when it comes to encouraging each other, you have no match in this world. You don't. But in following Christ, there is always a way to grow. There's always more steps to take. And I would suggest for us today that a step that we can take is not how we love, not to grow in how we love one another, but to grow in the why, why we love one another. I would say to you that, that, that the next step as the people of God we need to take is to lo learn to love one another for this reason and this reason only, that Christ abides in us. That's it. It is not about personality or charm or incredible humor and wit. It is not about any of those things. It is not about all the things that I might do or you might do to be more lovable or the things that I might do or you might do to make it harder for people to love you. We love one another because Christ abides in us. And it's really that simple. It works like this. I love Jesus. Through the waters of baptism, Jesus has come to abide in you. Therefore, regardless of who you are, what you look like, how you talk, what you say, what you do, I love you. And there's great news in that too. Because it means then that whether I see hundreds of brothers or sisters in Christ at one moment, or just a few, I see in my brother or sister, even if it's just one, that eternal an unshakable bond that we have with the entire church on earth. When I see a brother or sister in Christ, I see the whole church because in the brother and sister in Christ, there is Jesus, the one who is holding us together, the one who has us in his arms, the one who has called us out of darkness and gathered us into his kingdom. When I see even one brother or sister in Christ, I see the whole church. So though I might be leaving, there are two things. One is our love for one another doesn't change. Our bond doesn't change. And secondly, our fellowship remains. Because as you will gather here and I up there, we will still be gathering before Christ. What is a watering can? What is a planter or a waterer? And what is the people of the field but those who have Christ dwelling in them? So today, as I give you my last sermon, uh, I want to make some time, and forgive me, maybe this is a little bit scattered. I try to kind of neatly organize thoughts, but you know what? I never did that before. <laughs> and so 
Why start? That would be odd. So anyhow, I want to encourage you with the last two words I've been saying over the last couple of weeks. Let's keep going. Keep going. As I told you last week, there's no excuse not to. But I want to encourage you to, to, to keep going because as I reflected on my time here, I cannot rejoice over the things that Christ, I cannot help but rejoice over the things that Christ had done. Like how, for example, a note or a card or just a kind word came to me at just the right moment. You have no idea how many times that happened. You don't. But it always did. Or how, for example, we have in past years witnessed to not just those who were in their hospital beds who were of our own, but to entire hospitals and the community surrounding the hospital just by the way that you would show up, just by the way that you would send cards, just by the way that you would be there. Christ has made an incredible impact through you. Now we have come to be so invested in our community that foster parents and the foster community know us and they count on us. They rely on us. We have actually become one of the first people they will contact whenever there's a need. And that's why it's been happening so often. And what a blessing. Not only for ourselves, but for everyone else as well. I have seen how some of you have been willing to step in and help a brother or sister in Christ in need, and you committed only to a couple hours, and then you ended up coming back day after day after day until the job was done. I rejoice over the opportunities that I've had to, to meet with somebody in the food pantry with the food that you have provided and, well, prayed with them, chatted with them. I have enjoyed how this church, through the spirit and love for one another, has treated each person with dignity, especially those who have come in poverty. I have rejoiced over the way that you have let me into your lives. And I thank you for it. And there is so much more that could be said. The, the way that you have committed to one another through your small groups and have welcomed people into those groups. And the way that this church has always been a family to so, so many. And the way that that sense of family has been felt from the moment that a person walks into this door. All of that is a credit to Christ in you. For that I rejoice, and because of that, I must tell you again, keep going. There are still the hungry that need to be fed. There are still the poor that need to be served. There are still children who need you to tell them the gospel. Because if you think about it, why are you here? But because some busy, stressed out volunteer with their plate already full said, yeah, I'll teach Sunday school. And they did it with love. Be the same for them. Take the gifts that you have and share it. There are still youth that need to be gathered back together. There are still, again, foster children that need to know that you are loved, that they are loved and supported by you. There is still ministry to be done within your small groups. And there is still time ahead where there will be untold opportunities that God will provide you that we can't see or know. But in order for those opportunities to come, you must keep going. It will not be an excuse on the last day when Jesus calls you forward and you say, well, I'm sorry I couldn't do any of those things. We didn't have a pastor. He will say, you had me. That is all you needed. So please, 
make my joy complete, keep going, and trust that for every step along the way, for every challenge, for every unknown, God will give the growth. Make my joy complete by continuing to come and hear the word and receive the sacrament. Make my joy complete by continuing to support those who preach the word because so often those who preach the word have to be the things you don't want to see and hear the things you, or tell you the things you don't want to hear. And so often around those moments, resentment loves to hide. But you have been patient, you have heard, and you have been open to it. Continue, continue to be that way. So that you will hear the word and God will bless and give growth. Keep going. Make my joy complete. Continue to love one another in the way that you have. Outside are our directories. We haven't given some out for a while. It's been a pandemic. But take it. And I encourage you to grow in your love for one another today by taking one of those directories and finding one person that you have spoken to five times or less. No more than five times. Find someone in the congregation that you have spoken to five times or less that's in that directory. It will not be hard to do and send them an email, or if you're comfortable, call them. And just introduce yourself and ask if you can pray. It, it's really just that. Hi, I saw your name in the directory. Pastor made me do it. Just want to know if there's a way that I can pray for you. By the way, my name is. If you ever wanted to talk, I'm here. Find someone and grow. And may it be that the, by the time the next pastor arrives here, he looks at you all and says, my goodness, they really did keep going. Over these years that I have preached to you, you, you are my joy and my crown. As Paul says to his church in Corinthians, I say to you, you are my joy and my crown. Make my joy complete. Stay steadfast in the faith. Continue to cling to God and his word so that he might grow you into the last day where we will see one another face to face, the whole congregation. And on that day, you will be my reward. Again, as a borrower, all I can tell you are words that have already been written and said many times before. And so as I conclude, I'll do that one more time. I'll take from Paul's words. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Please stand for prayer. We pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their need. Almighty Father, we ask that you would continue to provide the growth. While laborers might come and go in your field, and you might continue to send them out or gather them together according to your will. We know that you are a farmer who loves his people, who loves his people, your field. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to pour out your spirit upon Good Shepherd, that you would strengthen them in their faith, that the power of your word might be preached here forevermore until the last day. We ask, Lord, also that your kingdom would come, that the day that we've been waiting for, the day that we've been longing for, your son's return, the gathering of your church on earth, of your people united under you, together. We pray that that day might come quickly, Lord, 
so that we can say goodbye to saying goodbye. We ask, Lord, that as we oftentimes have to go our separate ways, that you would continue to grow us in love for one another and remind us that the bond of fellowship that we have remains forever firm, eternal, and unshakable because we have you. Help us to grow in love for one another as we see Jesus Christ and our brother and sister. Help us not to look and evaluate according to the flesh, not according to preference or will or whim, but to look only for Jesus. And when we see Jesus, may we rejoice, knowing that we see another part of your kingdom, another one who has been called into the glorious richness of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we ask also that you would continue to bless the ministry of Good Shepherd, that it might grow in its outreach, that it might continue to be a blessing to not only those who gather here, but also to the community around it, that more and more might come to know you and your son Christ. We ask, Lord, also that you would be with foster children who do not have family or home, that they might find family or home as you provide. Bless our church and our outreach to them that, that they might, that these children and their parents might know that they are loved. We ask also that you would bless Wellroot and its continuing ministry with foster children. We pray, Lord, that you would also bless the poor, that our congregation through its food pantry and through its partnership with Family Promise might continue to do what you have commissioned us to do, to care for the weak and the lowly and those who have no food or home. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us in these efforts, that we would grow in these efforts as well. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we ask also that you would bless those who are sick and those who are suffering, that you would grant them healing and recovery. We pray for those who suffer, whether it is a mental illness, a spiritual or emotional illness. We ask that you would renew them, that you would work through the hands of doctors and nurses to bring them healing. We pray for Wayne Peter, Brittany Fitzpatrick, Hope Peter, Nell Purdy, Bill Moore Sr., Carol Wright, Alex Myers, Donna Holtz, Janice Peace, Doris Inkeman, Jim Giannoni, Ken Anderson, Lisa Jennings, Ron Gerda, Vance Livingston, John Schnarr, Pastor Bob Maltzahn, and George Wharton. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray also that you would bless those who grieve, whether their grief is new or whether it is grief that is been long lasting even for years. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort them with the joy of the resurrection, that you would send them the Holy Spirit to know that they are not alone in their sorrow or grief, but in them abides a Savior who also knew sorrow and mourning. We pray, Lord, that you would come quickly to raise the dead and reunite us with the faithful who have gone before. We ask that you would comfort especially Carolyn Warren and her family with the passing of Joanne Capitan, and also the family of Joan Kessler, Jim Fitzgerald's mother. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we ask also that you would bless the congregations in our circuit, that their ministry might also continue to prove fruitful. We ask that you would bless especially Trinity Lutheran Church in Tekoa, that you would bless Pastor Roland Vega and his ministry to them, that the people there would continue to uh, receive the word and sacrament to be strengthened in their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we ask also that you would bless the ministry of Holy Cross in St. Cloud. We pray that you would continue to watch over this congregation and continue to gather them together, that we might all together rejoice being a part of your field and being the fruit of your labor. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and your loving care. For you live and reign together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, at this point, we're going to do something a little bit different, um, as we are now gathering and meeting in our sanctuary, as opposed to the fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to conclude the online portion of the service, and also, together for those in person, we're going to respond uh, to God's many rich blessings um, as we pray uh, or as we pray and sing the common doxology.